Well, let's get into the Word of God tonight. Somehow I was granted an extra minute and a half on my clock, so I'm going to take advantage of that minute and a half extra that somebody gave me. So open your Bibles to Psalm 115. Psalm 115. We're going to look at verses 12 through 15. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, Psalm 115, verse 12 through 15. Did everybody have that? Okay, once you do, I want you to join us in reading. Ready, read. The Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless the, those who fear the Lord, both small and great. May the Lord give you increase more and more, you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. Father, tonight we give you praise and thanksgiving for the opportunity we have now to hear your word. I ask you, Father, to speak with divine utterance, Lord. Minister your word to us. Minister the seed to us tonight, Lord, the seed of your word. And we declare tonight, even in advance, that we are good ground. We are ready to receive your word and expect that it will produce a hundredfold return in our own lives. Hallelujah. Whatever we hear will do. We thank you for strengthening us and encouraging us by your word tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, claim your seats tonight. Hallelujah. 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 More and more. The Lord, may the Lord give you increase more yes. and more. Yes. We're talking about, now we la began last Wednesday night uh, with a message entitled Applying for a Heavenly Grant. Yes. That's part of a series that we're doing on five essentials for financial increase in any economy. Again, I mentioned to you all this little green book that the uh, Lord blesses the right back about uh, three, four years ago. And... Um, it's a blessing every time I read it. You know, it's, it's a little book, but it's a, it's a power pack book. Um, I, I mean that, and I'm not saying that because I wrote it. I'm saying it because the Holy Spirit said the things that are in there. And um, if you will read it, and every once in a while, uh, read it again, and then another time, read it again, and keep putting into practice what you read, I guarantee you, you'll see a change in your life in the area of finances. Yes. Uh, I know it because my wife and I have, have we were putting into practice these things before, we, before I wrote this book. Um, and so we live by it. Yeah. And so my goal of the next uh, couple weeks, few weeks, uh, particularly on the Wednesday night services, is to teach on that. So last week, again, we dealt with applying for a heavenly grant. Tonight, I want to talk from this uh, verse 14. May the Lord give you increase more and more. And I'll talk tonight on increase more and more. Increase more and more. Increase yes. more and more. Everybody say increase, increase. More, and more. more and more. Matter of fact, give it, make it a command to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, say increase, increase. More, and more. more and more. Tell them, I command you, I command you to, increase to increase more and more. more, and more. All right, now, again, yes. that's God's desire, and that's what I'm going to show you tonight. Tonight, I want to take the time to lay the foundation again <clears throat> that this is God's will, his desire for our lives. Now, we looked again last week at applying for a heavenly grant. Y'all remember that? Y'all yes. remember that? Yes. Applying for a heavenly grant? Okay, because God wants to grant things to you. Yes, we already found out last week, according to Colossians chapter 1, verse 12, that we've already been qualified to receive the grant. That's right. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 We're qualified to receive every grant there is available in heaven. Yes. Amen? Amen? Colossians 1, 12 talks about that. So, in other words, whatever you and I need, we have a place we can go to for it, Amen. and it's heaven. That's right. It's the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Anything we need in the earth realm, God already has it for us. Amen? Amen. Uh, Ephesians 1 talks about how God has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. I think that's verse 3 or 4 there, Ephesians 1, 3 and 4. He's already blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. So every blessing we need, God already has it for us. Amen. We just have to apply for the grant to get it by asking, by first of all, by desiring it, right? Amen. Then by asking. Uh, we looked at one scripture last week, uh, Psalm number 20, verse 4. Psalm 20, verse 4, which says, May he grant you according to yes. your what? And we spent last week talking about your heart's desire. Yes. How many of y'all have desires in your heart? Yes. Things that you would like God to do for you. Yes. <laughs> you understand God wants to do those things for you? Yes. And the Bible says, May he grant you according to your heart's desire, not his heart's desire. His heart's desire is to grant you. 
whatever your heart's desire is. So God does, doesn't sit there and control what you can have. God doesn't place any limit on what you can have. You understand? He said it's according to your heart's desire. So if you can desire it, God will grant it. Okay? And we, we talked about this over the last couple of weeks. What we found out, most of us, is that we've just been desiring too small. We've been desiring the crumbs that fall from the master's table, from a rich man's table. And God didn't want us living on crumbs. Crumbs are for roaches. <laughs> you understand? God didn't desire us to live off crumbs. He wants us to enjoy, to, to pull up and sit at the table. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Large table. My wife and I saw this week a table that seats 12 people. No, it was 10. It was 10. I think it was 10. You could probably squeeze 12, but I think it was, it was 10. I'll take 10. Yeah. The whole set, I think, was like $5,000. So we said, we just have to believe it in. Because it's, it's nothing to God. Because if you, I'm, see, you don't apply to the grant from people. No. You apply to God for the grant. Hallelujah. Right? You just got to make sure you're qualified. Well, we're already qualified. Right? And then have enough faith to ask. Uh, Mark eleven twenty four, what things soever you desire, that's the, the King James Version, what things soever you desire, you desire, you de this is Jesus now, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So the only requirement is that you have the desire. Number two, have the faith. And believe you receive it. Yeah. Which means it's not based on your paycheck. Yeah. Right. Not based on, on, on you having a job or not. No, right. Right. You understand that? The things of God aren't based on you having a job. Having a job is good because to, to fully operate in the system, you need seed. Yeah. I'll get there. I'll get there. But, but, but God can do it pre-job. He can do it beyond your job. You understand that? All right? So may he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. We also looked at Proverbs 10, 24 last week. The fear of the Lord will come up, the fear of the wicked, rather, will come upon him. So whatever the wicked fear is coming. All right? And the desire of the righteous, come on, will be granted. Will be granted. Will be granted. All right? We also looked also at uh, Deuteronomy 28, verse 11. Where God made this promise in his covenant. He says, and the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your ground, in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. So God wants to, plant, wants to grant you uh, barely enough to get by. No, plenty of goods. This is God's word here. So God is not a God of barely getting by. He's not a God of uh, just, you know, trudging through, see if we, can, if we can make it. No, he's a God who wants to grant you plenty. Everybody say plenty. plenty. Say it again. Say plenty. plenty. Now, the NIV, this same verse in the NIV, uh, says the Lord will grant you abundant prosperity. Hallelujah. So... <laughs> So there's an abundant prosperity grant you can apply for. How many of y'all since last week went back and applied for your heavenly grant? I, I, I meant to put out that, that uh, list of scriptures and everything that we had, uh, but, you know, if y'all, I'll get it out. Anybody wants it, I'm sure you'll ask me for it. Uh, but there's an abundant prosperity grant. So when God gives you a grant, he doesn't want to just pay for the classes. He want to pay for the classes and give you enough, you know, like <laughs> kid, people do today. They, people do today, they go get a student loan, and it's more than the class costs. Because they go buy, it used to be they go buy a stereo and an Xbox and this stuff. Now they, now they buy cars. I was at a car dealership the other day. The guy told me, he said, well, right now the car is really high because everybody's getting their student loan money in. So everybody who comes and use part of the student loan for the, for the class and use most of it to buy a car. Yeah. Wow. wow. They don't realize they're going to pay that back? <laughs> but God will give you a grant. 
that's abundant prosperity. Lord, I receive my grant for abundant prosperity. God, I receive the grant right now for abundant prosperity. I receive a grant for plenty of goods right now. My household, my flock, my children, my business, my ministry, everything that pertains to me, we receive our grant right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Abundant prosperity. <laughs> Glory to God. Woo-wee. I don't know if y'all see it. There's a little anointing in here right now. It's a little. Woo. Glory to God. Glory to God. Abundant prosperity. Now, that's the NIV. The New Century Version, and, and uh, we don't have that on the screen, but some of y'all have the New Century Version. It says, the Lord will make you rich. That's how the Lord will make you rich. <laughs> so there's a rich grant. It says that's, it's, it's, the Lord will make you rich. Hallelujah. I, I know my brother Tony used to have that NCV. He must have, must have, oh, you upgraded and got your new one. The Lord will make you rich. It's the same thing in the NCV. It says over there in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, right around verse 10 or 11, where it says, the Lord will make you rich in every way. You know, we do that confession yes. when we do offering. Right. You know, he'll make you rich in every way uh -huh. so that you can be generous and on every occasion. Right. That's what it says. He will make you rich. Yes. Now, you've got to be pretty much a rocket science or have a doctrine in theology to mess that up. When he says, I'll make you rich. Or when he says, he'll grant you abundant prosperity. Or he'll grant you plenty of goods. You have to really, you have to really, really, really work hard to mess that up. And yet people do it all the time. Because if, if abundant prosperity and being rich are bad, God doesn't know about it. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. He ain't heard. Come on, sir. Come on. No, I'm telling you, I mean, you know, and, I, and I've been taught God is omniscient. I've been taught God knows everything. And people in every denomination believe that. They believe God knows everything. There's nothing in the world, nothing in the universe that God does not know. Past, present, future. Anywhere in the world, he knows everything about everything. Well, he must not know you, that you can't be rich. Because he keeps saying here, I'll, I'll make you rich. I'll grant you abundant prosperity. I'll grant you plenty of goods. <laughs> so what happens as a result, ladies and gentlemen, now, you know we, we've been dealing with Sunday, on Sundays about uh, avoiding sin, the temptation, so on so, and so forth. We talked about how if you set your faith on, you know, I'll fall all the time, then that's what will happen. You'll fall all the time. But if we can put our faith on reaching that high water mark that Jesus Christ set for us, but when the Bible says he was tempted in all points yet without sin, so he set the water mark for us. So if I put my faith there, eventually my life will rise to that level of I don't sin. Oh, that's impossible. It is possible. Jesus Christ did it. And he, he, the Bible says he was our example. He wouldn't give us an example that we couldn't do. Come on now. He comes walking on the water. Peter says, Lord, if that's you, bid me to come. No, Peter, see, I'm, I'm Jesus. You can't do that. <laughs> no, you don't, you don't want to try this. Is this, this, uh, this is special. Come on now. No, what did he say? Come on. In other words, his walking was an example to Peter. If Peter, if you can put your faith on doing it, boy, come on out here, do it. Because everything he did was an example, right? He goes along one day, he's walking by, he's real hungry. He sees a fig tree off in the distance, goes to that fig tree, and he's getting ready to look for the fine fruit, doesn't find any fruit on it. He curses the fig tree, bam, come back the next day. The disciples said, Lord, the fig tree's dried up on the root. He said, well, you know, I'm special. No, he said, you, come on. You know, y'all guys can't do that. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just showing off. I'm showing off, you guys. I just, you know, I, I had a little extra power today in my pocket. I just want to, 
I want to show off my little extra juice I got, right? No, he didn't say that. He said, if you have faith, not only will you do what has been done to this tree, but see that mountain over there? If you, he said to you. In other words, what he's saying is, all I did was gave you the example, right? So everything Jesus Christ did was an example to us. So I can live without sin. Now, I'm on Sunday message, but I'm, I'm trying to get back to the night. So we got to set our faith level on living without sin. And eventually, eventually, you'll get there. So what happens in the body of Christ, because we have acted like God is a liar. Okay, because he don't, he don't know we're supposed to be rich. Or, or, or he, he don't know we're supposed to be poor. That's, that's what it is. People act like he's supposed to be poor now. So what happens is the body of Christ has set our faith level on just making our ends meet. That's as, that's as low as I'm going to fall every once in a while. Remember what we said? Now, your faith will only take you as far as you set it. If I set my AC on 70, it's not going to drop to 65. It'll, it'll get to 70 and it'll shut off. That's what you said happened to your faith in your apartment. You, your faith, you had a good job, cushy job, so your faith shut off. See, if you don't keep your faith working, if you don't, if you don't keep something for your faith to work on, it'll shut off. You understand that? So I don't want to put my faith on just making ends meet. Because if my ends start to meet, I'm done. My faith shuts off. No, I want to put my faith on what he said. May he, the Lord will grant me plenty of goods. The Lord will grant me abundant prosperity. Here you go. The Lord will make me rich. So my faith doesn't get a break until I have plenty of goods. My faith doesn't, doesn't, have a, doesn't get a break until I have abundant prosperity. My faith doesn't get a break until I, until I am made rich. That's why I set my faith. So what God wants us to do is set our faith on what we're talking about tonight here, increasing more and more. Now, that's what I spend the first chapter of this book here. Those of you who have that, again, if you don't have it, I, do we have any more of these copies of this? We sold out? Okay. All right, we sold out, so that means there are no more hard copies of this available in the world. Um, so you can, all, you can buy it online, though, the, the electronic version of it. All right, it's a, it'll be an e-book, uh, so you have it on your tablet, your iPad, or whatever you have. And I think it's like two bucks, all right? So order it. I'm not trying to pitch the book because I'm not going to pay off a car with your $2. Okay? So this is not, this is even ain't about that. This is just about you getting the book and having the book. Amen? All right. It'll, you can pay your car off. Do us in here. We can pay all our cars off. Houses and everything else. All right? So... Again, chapter 1 says God always wants you to increase. So we're talking about tonight increasing more and more. <clears throat> now, what I want you to understand here, because we're trying to set our faith at, a, at an appropriate level, correct? All right, so there's never a shortage where God is concerned. I want you to understand that. There is never a shortage where God is concerned. Because God supplies the needs of every living creature. Every living creature, God supplies the needs. God has enough to make sure every creature is, is taken care of. Yes, okay? I want to show you something here in Scripture. Let's, let's look back here at Genesis chapter 1. Genesis 1. I'm going to try to move a little quickly, but not too quick that I lose you. Genesis 1, are you there? Verse 20. Let's see the nature of God here, what he does. Then God said, this is, this is the, the fifth day we're working on now. All right? So God takes the first four days and gets everything ready for days five and six. Y'all got it? He takes the first four days of creation and prepares every, the whole universe, the whole earth specifically, for days five and six. Because on days of five and six, he's going to make living things. But before he makes the living things, he has to take the first four days to get everything ready for the living things to be taken care of. You understand that? He took most of his time in creation preparing for us to show up. 
Okay, let me, let me, let me go. Let me. He spent the most of creation preparing for the birds to show up. He didn't even let the bugs show up before everything was ready for them to be sustained. Got it? He's provision minded. Okay, now watch. Uh, verse 20. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures. Right there you get the mind of God. That's the mind of God. Yeah. He, he didn't say, let me, I, got, I got 50 trillion gallons of water on this ocean. Let me throw in a few goldfish here. Let me sprinkle it on. He said, let the, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures. And then let the birds fly above the earth. So the birds came out of the water too. Mm -hmm. Above the earth, across the face of the, of the firmament of the heavens. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves, with which the waters abounded according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. Just keep those birds in mind here now. And God saw that it was what? Good. And blessed them, saying, be fruitful and? Multiply. Now, they're already abundant. Y'all yeah. missed that. Yeah. They're already abundant. Yes. They, it already abounds with abundance. Yeah. Okay, but then he puts a blessing on them and tell, makes them, that blessing to empower them to multiply. Why? Because God always wants increase more and more. God never wants decrease. He never wants less. So even if there's a lot, he says that's not enough. More. Y'all missed that. He, there was already abundance of them. He said, I created abundance, but I'm going to empower you. Now I'm going to empower, I'm not going to create more. I'm going to empower you to become more. Y'all, don't forget that there, okay? <laughs> He's going to empower you to get more. Don't forget it's God who gives you the power to get wealth. Doesn't matter if you're already wealthy. Well, God shouldn't keep blessing the wealthy people. Listen. You can't ever have so much that God is like, ooh, you got too much. <laughs> Come on now. If that was the case, when, when Jesus had told a parable about a man who gave uh, five, two, and one talent, yeah. right? Yeah. And the guy who had five double hit, has, he had ten. Right. Guy had two doubled his, he ended up with four. Guy who had one, he had his, he ended up losing his. Jesus said, the man said, take that guy, take that one from that guy, give it to the one who had 10. He already got 10. I don't care. He says to whoever has, more will be given. The mind of God is that I don't care how much you have, I want to increase you more and more. You can never have too much for God. And we got to get this through our minds, ladies and gentlemen, that we've got to change our faith level. From the Lord, just I just oh, give me my daily bread and just oh, Lord, I just ask you no. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. He said, Don't you even ask about your needs. We ought to be, be have our faith on increase. It doesn't, it doesn't hardly take anything for your ends to meet. You don't need faith for your ends to meet because you know, to get your ends to meet, raise your capital, cut your expenses. You can, you can, you can make your ends meet tomorrow. I guarantee you, most of y'all who struggle financially, if you let me come to your house for one day, I can make your ends meet. My wife knows me, budget man. <laughs> I can make your ends meet in a heartbeat. Hallelujah. I'll make them meet and kiss and get married. <laughs> your ends will be so tight. All right? So he blessed them. Let's, all right, let's move on. Verse 24. Then God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind. The earth now, the earth now, not, not the seed, it's the earth now. Uh, cattle and creeping thing and beasts of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so, and God made the beasts of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So then, verse 26, I don't have to read that. Y'all know God made man, and then he blessed him and multiplied him, uh, gave him, uh, blessed him and told him to multiply. All right? Now, go down, please, to verse uh, 29. 29. And God said, see, I have 
giving you every herb that yields seed. This ain't marijuana, y'all. People like to tell you, that's the herb, that's the herb. That ain't no herb, marijuana. I mean, if you be smoking no marijuana, I don't care, who, I don't care where they legalize it. Hallelujah. Well, I need it for my glaucoma. You better be healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> Settle my nerves. You better let the peace of God rule in your heart. <laughs> I've given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. So notice, all this is already done before they show up. Day six. Then you see verse uh, 29, and God said, I'm sorry, verse 30, also to every beast of the earth and to, to every bird of the air, remember that, every bird of the air, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I've given every green herb for food. And it was so. So God says, in other words, I've made enough already to take care of everything I've created. Every bug, every bird, every beast, and every person. He's already given it. So you and I got to make sure we don't ever buy into this idea of food shortage. Any, yeah, thank you. Any food shortage that's out there is manufactured by man. It's men doing what Proverbs 11 talks about. Y'all, y'all, let, let, y'all, turn over there real quick. Turn over real quick. Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11. Verse 26. The people will curse him who withholds grain, but blessing will be on the head of him who sells it. That's what happens when you, you hear about a, a food shortage. What's actually happening in the marketplace is they're withholding food to jack the prices up. Yeah, dumping this stuff, getting rid of it. They, they'd rather get rid of it to drive prices up than to sell it to you at a fair price. And the Bible says that people curse them. Not cuss them, curse them. Speak failure to that business, to that industry that does that. All right? So, that, so there's no food shortage. So you can't let that get into your mind and start dictating uh, how you think. Oh, things going up, I'm going to struggle. No, you can't allow that to happen. If you let that even come out of your mouth, guess what's going to happen? You're going to struggle. Okay? A man shall be satisfied by the fruit of his mouth. A man's belly shall be satisfied by the fruit of his mouth. Three or four or five times through Proverbs you'll read that. So if you want to eat well, keep talking well. If you want to live well, keep talking well. Don't talk struggle. If you keep talking struggle, you're going to struggle, you're going to be poor, you're going to be broke, you're going to be busted and disgusted, sick, everything. Got it? So God says, I've already provided for everybody. Now look, let's go over to Psalm 145. Let's travel back to Psalms. Psalm number 145. Now, y'all turn your pages real quick now and catch up with me. Psalm 145. We got a long ways to go. Psalm 145, verse 15. I don't want to keep you all night. Psalm 145, verse 14. The Lord upholds all who fall and raises up all who are bowed down. Verse 15. The eyes, come on now, of all look expectantly to you and you give them their food in you open your hand and satisfy the desire come on of every living thing so God is the one that if we look to him he'll supply all of our needs he'll make sure cupboards are full refrigerators are full pantries are full whatever you got call it He'll, he'll make sure you always have enough if we keep looking to him. Okay? The eyes of all look expectantly to him, to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. So there's always enough to go around. <laughs> Got a guy doing some work in my house, and uh, he was talk- came through there Monday, and he, said, he asked me, did I hear him holler? And I said, no. He said, man, I was hollering like a girl. I said, really? What happened? 
He said, I was walking through your yard, and I saw like a three or four foot snake in the backyard. And he said, I was walking through. I kept going, took off. He said, when I came back through, though, he said, I saw a mockingbird chasing that snake out of your yard. <laughs> I said, that's right. That's my security bird right there. <laughs> I got security birds, boy. Security bird. No, no, what's happening? That bird's going to eat that snake. See, because God's got a cycle, right? He feeds every living creature. And, and the guy, and he said, well, you know, Pastor, he said, I don't, I don't know, you know, he said, I, don't, I hate snakes. I said, yeah, I don't like snakes either. And, uh, you know, I don't keep them in my house. And uh, he said, I, I don't even know what good they serve. I said, well, actually, I found out, because I was trying to get rid of all the snakes out of, my, out of my yard, but I found out, and I still don't want them, but I found out that snakes are good. They eat all your rodents. So that's, I don't, I don't have mice and rats around my house. Uh, yeah, because of the fruit trees and everything. So they, they eat all that, right? Because everything has a purpose. All right, let me get back on because I'll be on a rabbit trail somewhere because I can keep going. Amen. But those birds eat those snakes. So God doesn't want anybody to go hungry. And there's enough for everybody. The animals in my neighborhood eat real good. Mangoes aren't, aren't even that big yet. They're already eating the mangoes. Pfft. Horrible. And I'm mad. Now, so he opens his hands and satisfies the desire of every living thing. Now, he talked about the, 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 um, the birds, the beasts, the bugs, the fish, man, everything. He supplies the needs, right? So remember, that's what Jesus Christ said to us in Matthew 6, to take no thought. For your life. Because he's going he's gonna to satisfy us. He's going to meet our needs. Right? So let's look at Matthew 6 real quick. Matthew 6 verse 25 and 26. Because Jesus says something here. Hallelujah. I'm trying to make this as plain as possible. I don't want to get too hyper. Glory to God. Matthew 6 verse 25. Therefore I say to you, do not worry. Or the King James says, take no thought about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or know about your body, what you'll put on. In other words, uh, don't think about uh, substance, provision. Okay? Or what we'll put on, clothing, raiment, or, or housing. That, that raiment, that clothing includes housing. He says, is not life more than food in the body, more than clothing or housing? Verse 26. Verse 26. Verse 26. Look at the birds of the air. That's what he says in Luke 12. Consider the birds. Consider the ravens, in fact. But here he says, look at the birds of the air. So you and I ought to make a practice of looking at those birds. And the birds aren't frantically worried about anything. No toil. No struggle. They give in the morning. They're all singing every morning. There's, there's one bird. I, I, can't, I don't know what this bird is, but it makes it sound like... I hear that every morning. I get up, getting dressed, so I go outside and sit. I'm going to pray out, outside or whatever. In my word, I hear this... I'm about to look it up and find out what that bird is. I don't, how do you Google that? How do you... <laughs> Just have to Google. Huh? You got the same bird. He's probably that's his cousin. I don't know either. It's just but this bird, birds, they're just singing every day. The robbers are saying thank you. They're praising God every morning. They're just giving that no cares, no worries. They're not worried about, you know, American Idol and who's going to win the playoffs. And they, they don't not think about that kind of stuff. They're not worried about who's in office, who's going to win the next election. You understand? That? They're not worried about, you know, if, if the stock market is going to crash today or if it's going to increase by 500 points. They're not thinking about that. 
They're not thinking about if there's a hiring freeze in, in the city or in the, in, in the state. They don't, they're not worried about the unemployment rate. They're not worried about unemployment checks running out. They're not worried about disability and retirement. They're not worried about that stuff. He said, you read again in Luke, he said, consider. Which means you need to kind of sit there and just kind of think about it. Dear God, make me a bud so I can fly far, far, far away from here. Dear God, make me a bud so I can fly far, far, far away from here. <laughs> No, I don't want you to become a bird. But I want you to become bird brain. Oh, so, Pat, yeah, that's like dumb sheep, ain't it? <laughs> if we can be dumb sheep, we can also become bird brain. In other words, start thinking like a bird. Which means I don't think about, I don't take anxious thought about how I'm going to eat, how I'm going to drink, how I'm going to be clothed, how I'm going to be provided for. Okay, I just get up singing. If I get up singing, he'll always make sure I find something in the yard. If I get up praising, I'll always make sure I find something over yonder. <laughs> I'm telling you. If we just start every day just getting up praising God, I thank you that I'm already cared for today. Thank you that I already have all my needs met today, nothing for me to worry about. I don't have a care in the world. I don't have a care in the world. Hallelujah. 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 Now watch this now. He says, look at the birds of the air, or consider the birds of the air, for they don't sow or reap or gather in the barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. So your heavenly Father, he's not their heavenly Father. He's just their creator. But he's your heavenly father. And he says, now watch this now. They don't sow, they don't reap, they don't gather in the barns, yet your heavenly father uh, feeds them. Are you not of much of more value to God than, that's what he says, that's what it means, value to God than they? Aren't you more valuable to God than they? Sure, of course you are. What is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you, that you visit him. The angels were sitting there saying, what is this creation you made? We watched you make the birds. We watched you make the beasts of the field. We watched you make the fish. We watched you make all the little bugs. But what is this man? What's this, what's this thing you have with him? God, Father, they're looking and saying, uh, sir, you never visit the bugs. You never visit the birds. You, you never visit the beasts. But how come you keep visiting these, these men? Do you understand how valuable you are to God? Now, if the birds don't have a care in the world, how come you and I who have a father who places so much value on us that he made us a jewel of his creation. That when he finished everything, you go back to Genesis 26, uh, Genesis 1, 26, 27, 28, you'll see what he says um, after he made everything. The last thing he made was man, right? Then he says to man, and I give you dominion. Over the birds, yeah. over the beasts, yeah. over the bugs, yeah. over the fish, yeah. over all the earth. Yeah. Yes, sir. How much value do you have to God that he make you and then put you in charge of his whole creation? Look, look at your neighbor and say, I am somebody. I am. Oh, you better say it again like you really know it. I am somebody. I am somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Woo-wee. I got some value in God's eyes. I'm high up on God's charts. Woo. 
that he care for you and visit you? All right, now let's watch something here. He says here, look at the birds. So now let's look at them again. And look at what he says about the birds. They neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. So Jesus identifies the fact that we have the same supplier, same source but a different system. He says, look at the birds now. Now they're being fed on a different system. On their system, they get up, and they, they, God says, okay, over there. So they're going to walk through somebody's yard, or, and they'll, they'll find the little bugs, little grubs, or something like that. Uh, we were watching them today. They get, uh, out in that yard, just picking up all the little things out the yard. I'm like, y'all do it, because that, that keeps the grass healthy and strong. Thank you. They're aerating the yard and eating all the grubs. Yeah. But see, they're being fed. Yeah. 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 Right? Yes, so they're on a system that there's no sowing, no reaping, and no savings. No extra. No gathering in the barns. Yeah. Now he feeds them. But he says, you're of much more value. So I've given you a different system of operation. So yeah, the birds, they got it all right that they don't have to do it and get that kind of stuff. But they also don't have any barns. So they have an ability or they don't have the ability to go back in the barn and get something out the barn. They don't have any barns. They don't have any storehouses. They, they still got to be thinking about daily. They got to sing the song right. <laughs> they got to sing me a song now. <laughs> but we are to sow and reap and gather and store into barns. Now, you don't need barns unless you have plenty. Plenty of goods. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Plenty of goods. Yes, sir. <laughs> barns are made for the plenty. They're made for the overflow. They're made for the extra. You understand that? Yes, sir. And Jesus said here they don't have barns. Implication is you sow, you reap, you have barns. <laughs> Praise God. Think about my good friend, Brother Tony. We like to go get lunch or breakfast together all the time. And uh, he always said, Pastor, let's go over to, to Bob's Big Barn. I know what he means by Bob's Big Barn. It's Bob Evans. He can't remember Bob Evans. He always calls it, let's go, Pastor Ray. Pastor Ray let's go to Bob's Big, to the, to the Big Barn. He's so funny. Hopefully, I'm going to see him this week again. We're going to get together at the big barn. <laughs> Every city we go to, we find a big barn. But you need a barn if you got something to store. And he wants you to have something to store. I said he wants you to have something to store. Go to Proverbs 3, verse 9 and 10. Y'all know that one? Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Honor the Lord. With your, your possessions or your first fruits, the first fruits of all your, increase. of all your, increase. of all your what? Increase. So God naturally expects you to have increase. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you understand the kind of ex expectation that God has on you that you should have increase. That He just, if you don't have increase, He's, he's like, what's going on? What you mean? Right. Is there something I've done wrong? Come on, sir. All right. So honor him with your substance or your possession, the first fruits of all your what again? Increase. Your increase. Go to see what happens if you honor him with your increase. So when you get increased, you're supposed to honor him with it. If you honor him with the increase that you already have, yes. huh? Yes, if you honor him with the increase that you already have, already have. Come on. 
with the increase you already have. Yes. Cast your bread out of what you already have. Yes. Right? And what's going to happen as a result is, oh, he barns. said, your barns, you know those barns? Yeah. How many of y'all have barns? Yes. Anybody got a, yes. I got a barn. Bass, I have no barn. You better get your barn. I don't have a backyard. You don't need a backyard. You just need a back pocket with a card, a little plastic card, that when you go to your barn and you can swipe that. See, for you it's called a bank account. Right? Yeah, and I like to see mine now. I like to. I like, I like cash. See, that's what I miss from the barbershop. Yeah. See, barbershop, you get all that cash, man. Yeah. <laughs> you, Pastor, you crazy. That germs and stuff all over that cash. Listen. Listen, I ain't wearing no germs. <laughs> Think about germs on money. I ain't no germaphobe. I'm a broker fold. I ain't trying to be broke. Right? Right? I'm a broker fold. I, ain't... I like money. MCM. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all don't smile. Money, cash, money. What y'all talking about? MCM. Y'all so young. Money, cash, money. Y'all know y'all y'all got uncles and cousins used to wear the outfit, used to have MCM all over them. I know what that I know what it is. What y'all thought it meant? Oh boy. So he says, my barns will be filled. Come on now. With Plenty. Remember, I got a plentiful grant. Yeah. He says, so he'll fill my barns with plenty. Yes. Say everybody say it again. Say plenty. plenty. You like how that come off your mouth? Plenty. You got a you got a plenty. You can't say plenty. You can't you can't even be plenty. You got a plenty. You got like stretch. Plenty. Plenty. Your neck get involved. That neck. Plenty. T. T. Plenty. 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 Oh, they talking foolishness. That's the Bible. We're reading out of the Bible. If this foolishness, God don't know it. Because this is from the Lord. If this is some, some heretical doctrine, God doesn't know it. Because he's saying it. If you honor me with your increase, I'll make sure your barns, your bank accounts are not just at zero. And you got to always got to check your account every day. I gotta go to the gotta go to the grocery store. Let me check my account first. Right? That ain't how you supposed to live. I have an announcement. That is not how you're supposed to live. I refuse. Anybody with me on this here? I refuse to live like that any longer. Oh, now, now I got to have an app on my phone. Let me check my, check my phone app to see what my bank account is because I need some milk. What? No, 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 let me, let, me, let me say something. This is not to bother anybody if that's where you are now. Because the good thing about, about knowing where you are now is you know where you got to go now. So if that's where you are now, this ain't to beat you up. This is to bring you up. This is the really the jerk you up to say, not another day am I going to live like that. But you got to put your faith on breaking out of that. I'm putting my faith on barns being filled with plenty. And my vats, that represents your business. Any of y'all have any business interests? Your vats overflowing with, with new wine. New, that's new, new business, new contracts, new opportunities. New customers, new clientele, new connections, new locations, new innovations, new, new inventions, new ideas, new designs, <laughs> new revenue streams. That's what that new wine is.
my barns are filled with plenty. Say it. Say, my barns are filled with plenty. Hallelujah. Well, that, that, that ain't, I don't know. Hey, change it. From now on, my barns are filled with plenty. I'm going to show you this here in a second. If y'all got time, y'all got time, boy. Hallelujah. Oh, God. I want to I show you some stuff here. Psalm 144. Go to Psalm 144. Say, my barns are filled with plenty. I got six of y'all to say it. The rest of y'all, come on. My barns are filled with plenty. All right, Psalm 144. Verse 11. Verse 11. Rescue me and deliver me from the hand of foreigners. That's those dead people. <clears throat> people, people want to keep you owing them and stuff like that. That's foreigners. That's because that's not the system of God. Those are foreigners. Again, it's not, not, not beating you up if you're in debt because many of us in here, most of us in here are in debt currently. But we're coming out of that. And we're not going to be lenders, uh, borrowers anymore. We're going to be lenders. What lenders do is lenders charge the bank to hold their money. That's the interest that you collect every, you know, right now we, we collect interest on our money that's sitting in the bank. Oh, it's not a lot. But it's, it's still, you know, you look up every quarter, they, they, they put 35 cents in your account, they put $45 or whatever, because it's, it's just the interest you collect off your money. That's your charge to them to hold your money. Instead of them charging us to hold their money. That's what debt is. They're charging us to hold their money. No, from now on, we're going to charge them to hold our money. Come on, say that. Say, from now on, we're going to charge them to hold our money. Because they speak lying words. Oh, we got a good plan for you. This is, yeah, right. And whose right hand is the right hand of falsehood. Verse 12, that our sons may be plants, be as plants grown up in their youth. Uh-huh, our sons are supposed to be looking good. Yeah. That our daughters may be pillars sculpted in palace style. Our daughters are supposed to be fine and pretty. Yeah. And watch what happens with our money. That our barns may be full. May be full. full. Supplying all kinds of produce. Yeah. Your barns. Say, my barns are full. Say it again, my barns are full. My barns are full. Matter of fact, say my barns are filled with plenty. My barns are filled with plenty. Hallelujah. All right, Deuteronomy 28. Come on, let's keep going. Deuteronomy 28. Glory to God. Glory to God. Y'all get anything so far? Yes. Everybody say increase more and more. Increase more and more. All right, Deuteronomy 28, verse 8. The Lord will command the blessing, the blessing, not just a blessing, any blessing, the blessing. Remember, the blessing of the Lord makes rich, Proverbs 10, 22, right? So he'll command the blessing on you in your storehouses, storehouses is another name for barns, and on all to which you set your hand and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. So God will command a blessing on your barns. So notice again, we're, we're, all we're doing is just considering the birds. On one, on the one hand, we're comparing ourselves to the birds. We're saying, okay, uh, we have the same creator, same maker. He feeds them, so he'll feed me. He'll, he'll feed me. That's the comparison. But on the other hand, what we're doing mostly is contrasting ourselves with the birds. We're saying, yeah, but they don't sow or reap or gather in the barns. We sow and reap and gather in the barns because we have so much we have to put some away. So our barns are to be filled with plenty. All right? Now, we got a few minutes left here. Let's go to Psalm 115. Hallelujah. I'm probably not going to finish this, but we'll, we'll pick it up next week. Psalm 115. Glory to, God. Glory to God. Verse 1. Got it? Y'all got it? All right. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but to your name give glory. Because of your mercy, because of your truth. Verse 2. Why should the Gentiles keep picking on us? Saying, oh yeah, where, where's y'all God? 
Because that's what the Gentiles do. The world picks on the Christians. Oh, look at them there. They, they just so, so dumb. Serving God. They going to church on a Sunday while I'm going to get on my, on my boat, on my yacht. You know, look at them. They doing all this stuff. Worshiping a God they can't see. They're paying tithe, sewing, praying, fasting, going to church on a Wednesday. A Wednesday night, you're in church? You don't know about happy hour on hump night? It's hump day! Once the day. Right? <laughs> Come on now. And they look at us and say, so where is their God? Verse 3, we got to an answer. But our God is in heaven. I like that. Come on. You don't know where he is? He's in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. All right? So what we got to figure out then is what does he please? Or what pleases him? We know Psalm 35, 27 said that he takes pleasure in prosperity of his servant. All right? But let's not travel too far. Let's back up uh, to, to just the previous Psalms. Look at Psalm 112. Let's see what pleases God. Let's see what pleases him. Psalm 112, verse 1. Y'all ready? Praise the Lord. Blesses the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his what? His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the, of the upright will be what? Amen. Verse 3, here's what pleases the Lord. Wealth and riches will be in his house and his righteousness endures how long? Amen. That must please God because that's the result of this man fearing God. Yeah. Remember, he does whatever he pleases. Yeah. So if I fear God, he makes me rich and wealthy is because he pleases to make me rich. Yeah. rich and wealthy. That pleases him. He wants to see me rich and wealthy. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, God wants to see you rich and wealthy. God wants to see you rich and wealthy. Do they, do they catch it? Do they, do they hear you? Yeah. You better tell them again if you're not sure. Tell them God wants you rich and wealthy. God wants you rich and wealthy. Tell them that pleases him. Yeah. All right, Psalm 113. Yeah. Psalm 113. See, we got to get this idea out of our hearts in the body of Christ like God wants us broken, poor, and barely making it and still singing praises. Every praise is too... Man, you can praise a whole lot different when you got some money in your pocket. No, you don't, I'm, I know I'm right. Because there ain't no money in your pocket and you don't know how you're going to eat tonight when you leave church. It's, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. But when you got some money... Your needs are met. Every praise. <laughs> All right. That's perfected praise now. Ain't no weeping praise. It's a rejoicing praise. The Lord has done this. It's marvelous in our eyes. Lord, I will praise you for you have done it. Psalm 113. Let's see what pleases the Lord. Verse 7. He raises the poor out of, out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the ash heap that he may seat, seat him with princes, with the princes of his people. He grants the barren woman grants. So there's a childhood. There's a, there's a child grant. You can apply for a child grant. He grants the barren woman a home like a jovial mother of children. Praise the Lord or hallelujah. So this pleases the Lord. Remember, he does whatever he pleases, right? Psalm 114. Psalm 114, <clears throat> verse 7. Tremble, O earth, at the, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a fountain of waters. Flint is another word for rock. So, God turned the rock into a pool of water. Well, Pastor, well, how is that prosperity? He made something out of nothing, child. 
It was a rock. He made water come out of a rock. When the last time you did that? So if God, come on, there you go. If he can get water out of a rock, he can get blood out of a turnip. He can get oil out of a vessel. He can get wine out of water. He can get a corn out of fish's mouth. Come on now. All right, now, go back to Psalm 115 now. But our God is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. He does whatever he pleases. All right, down to verse 12. Let's see what pleases him now. In other words, he does, what, he does his will. He does his will, right? Because his will pleases him, right? You can't make God do anything that's not his will. You can't make God do anything, anything that doesn't please him. So his will pleases him. Now, let's look at what his will is. The Lord has been mindful of us. He will, will bless us. Everybody say, he will bless me. Come on, put your faith on that. He will bless me. Then it says, he will bless the house of Israel. Then it says, he will bless the house of Aaron. Then it says, he will bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great. Now, again, he said, he will bless us. That's all of us. Blessing on all of us. <laughs> but then he breaks it down. He will bless the house of Israel. That's all the people. The whole nation. Mm -hmm. Then he says, separately, he will bless the house of Aaron. That's the priesthood. He separated the two. Now he said he'll bless us, that's all everybody, but then he separates it. Which what he's saying is that if the people ain't right, he can still bless the priest. And if the priest ain't right, he can still bless the people. See, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't have to wait. I was telling my mother-in-law a few weeks ago, she was talking about, you know, she needed need another vehicle. And she said, but Pastor, I'm just, I want to wait on you and Kim to y'all get y'all new truck. I said, don't you dare wait on us. Come on. Come on here. Why in the world would you wait on us? Yeah. God can bless you independently. Yes. It wasn't a, wasn't a week and a half later. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. She got that very thing, 2014, debt free. Yeah. 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 See, he will bless us. He'll bless the house of Israel. He'll bless the house of Aaron. Yeah. See, we're the house of Aaron. Yeah. Which... See, that helps me because that means my blessing don't, don't depend on how folk act. Right. It, don't matter, it don't depend on how many folks stay or how many folk go. He'll increase us more and more. And if I should start to act stupid, he'll still bless you if you keep doing everything God's already taught you. You understand? If I go, go haywire and get crazy and flip my lid and jump off the boat somewhere. God will still bless you if you keep doing what you've been taught. Independent of each other. Now, of course, understand why, why your priest is so important because to believe right, you got to hear right. And most of the people in the body of Christ aren't hearing right, so they don't believe right. they hearing we can't make it. they hearing, well, we need, need the, man, the man always trying to hold, his, hold us down. Listen, we don't need to hear that kind of stuff. We need to know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We need to hear that no man shall be able to stand before us all the days of our life as God was with Moses, so he'll be with us. All right, now. Now let's look at something here. Oh, man, it's 9 o'clock. Verse 13. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great. Now, notice here that it doesn't depend on how you start. He says small and great. So it doesn't matter if you start out and you, you have nothing 
or you started out and you were born with a silver spoon. If you can work with the system of God, he'll bless anybody on any level at any time, anywhere. He'll bless both small and great just as long as you fear the Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Let me show you one place here. Psalm 25. Psalm 25. Hurry up, please. Hurry up. Psalm, Psalm 25. Verse 12. Psalm 25, verse 12. Who is the man that fears the Lord? Who is the man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. He himself shall dwell in, come on, prosperity. live in prosperity. Uh, I think one translation says say he, he himself shall dwell at ease. Yes. King James, he himself shall dwell at ease. Remember, that means if you dwell at ease, ease must be on easy street. So you'll live on easy street if you fear the Lord. King James says you'll live at ease. <laughs> See, you understand what God says? If you would just fear him, which means to honor him, reverence him, obey him, uh, follow him, we'll be blessed no matter how we start. Now, let me show you something here. Let's go to 14, verse 14. Psalm 115, verse 14. May the Lord give you what? All right, Psalm 115, verse 14. May the Lord give you increase. Y'all went to sleep on me already? Oh, man. We, clock stopped. Y'all shut down. Y'all. Y'all at 115 now? Verse 14. May the Lord give you increase. How, what? More and more. I think the King James says, the Lord will increase you. So this isn't just some request. It is a, a statement of fact. The Lord will increase you. How? More and more. Now listen, listen to me very carefully and we're going to shut this down here. God only deals in increase for his people. Got it? God will never decrease you. You got to hear me on this because many people make, make some uh, moves in their lives saying, well, you know, I'm following God. If you hit decrease, it's not God because God only deals with increase. That, and that's, 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 that's a hard pill to swallow there. But God only deals, deals with increase. He doesn't, he doesn't take you um, down. Now, if, 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 he, if you experience down, it is a, is, a, is a very brief season where you had to back up because you were in some wrong place. He has pulled you out of that wrong place. But if you were in the right place following God, he will not pull you from increasing to decreasing to pull you higher. Ooh. God taking me through right now. He had to, I, he had to, I had to I, you know, this one guy sings this song and it just bothered me. You know, God had me living in a hotel and my wife would put the baby in the bathtub and everything and I love my wife. Man, that was not God doing that. God, I'll stand because you're taking me. God's not doing that. God don't put people in, sleeping in no bathtubs. Just tell the folk you mismanage your money. God, don't put your child sleeping in no bathtub. You've been used to it. No, that ain't, that ain't God. Stop it. I trust you. You should have been trusting him a long time ago when, when, when he gave you the money. And handled it right instead of buying all the custom suits before your time. You got, my, my wife, we, I think we might write a book called Here and There. We, this thing been on us about this. We got to know where we are. When you're here, don't try to act like you're there. Live here right now until God brings you there. Once you're there, you're there becomes you're here. Too many times we're here trying to act like we're there because other folk look like they're there. They ain't really there. They're here too. <laughs> trying to fake the funk like they got it going on. They know good and well. And the quicker you and I just be honest about where we are, we can then get to where God's trying to take us away from us. Y'all got this here? All right, now listen to this. Let's go to one more scripture here. This is our last one. So God only deals with increase for his people, right? 
even if he has to decrease the world to increase us. All right? Let's talk, go to one last place, Psalm 107. Psalm 107. Decrease for us is a sign of oppression. If there's decrease in our lives, there's some way the enemy is working. Keep trying to hold us down because you and I are built to increase. You and I are designed by God to continue to increase more and more. We, we should get richer and richer. We should get more and more healthy and strong. Our family should get more and more peaceful. Everything about us should be getting better and better every day. The path of the just is brighter and brighter to the perfect day. Proverbs 4.18, right? Okay? So decrease should not be existing in our lives. If it is, there's an oppression, some oppression somewhere. Now watch this. Psalm 107, verse 31. Y'all got it? All that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the church, in the, in the, in the assembly, in the praise team, let, and praise him in the company of the elders. Now watch what he does here, verse 33. Watch this. He turns rivers into a wilderness and water springs into dry ground. A fruitful land he turns into barrenness. Why? For the wickedness of those who dwell in it. So when, there, when you have wicked people, God strips them. Now then watch what happens. Verse 35, he turns a wilderness, or we could say the same wilderness. Because I want you to see what happened here. You, in one place you have wicked people, wicked people in the, in the mansion. Wicked people own the company. So he'll cause everything to fall apart for them. And what a company that was worth a million dollars, they got to now try to sell it to you for 10000 Because everything turned into wilderness. But then now you come along and you get it. And then God turns it around. Everybody say he turns it around. He turns a wilderness into pools of water and dry land back into water springs. There he makes the hungry, those who were hungry before, dwell that they may establish a city for a dwelling place. So he'll give you what others lost. He'll decrease them so he can increase you. Mm -hmm. That ain't fair. Who said God was fair? Where in the world did the Bible ever say God was fair? He's just never said he's fair. He said, that's right, he'll do whatever he doggone well please. I mean, who's going to stop him? Yeah, he's going to increase me. He's going to increase you. He's going to increase you. I'm telling you this. Now watch this. Now he, get, he gives him this dwelling place. Watch 37. And so fields and plant vineyards. Now watch them cause, because he gave him the good land, the good stuff. But remember, you got to still work with his system here. Now, I'm not going to teach this tonight. We'll get to this later on. And so fills and plant vineyards that they may yield a fruitful. Now, I want to read verse 37 in the King James. You have the King James? Give me 37, King James. King James, watch this. Watch this. And so the fields and plant vineyards which may yield fruits of increase. So where other people couldn't, couldn't make a dime, God will bring you there. All, and you get in that same place that couldn't produce anything, yes, and you sow, right. yes, all of a sudden you'll start increasing. Yes, all right? Now let's go back to New King James here. Let's keep going. Verse 38. Verse 38. Read it with me. He also... All right, y'all got 38? Read it with me. Ready? Read. He also blesses them, and they... And he does not let their cattle decrease. God will not allow you to decrease. Decrease is not part of his vocabulary when it comes to his people. He will not allow your cattle. He won't allow, he won't allow your cattle represents business, doesn't it? He won't let your business decrease. That girl talked about, talked about getting new clients, new customers. She's been so booked. Man, yeah. 
He won't let you decrease. Work with the system, make everything right. He will make sure you increase more and more. All right, now watch. Let's, let's finish it right here. Verse 39. When they are diminished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. So if diminishing happens, it wasn't God. It's from oppression, affliction, and sorrow. That word oppression from the, from the Hebrew means restraint. So there's something, uh, demons, uh, de demon spirit trying to restrain your prosperity. That word affliction literally means evil. And then sorrow is, is sorrow. All right? So what makes you diminish, if you're experiencing diminishing in your life, it's through restraint, evil, and sorrow. Now notice, God doesn't like that for his people. So he does not about Look at verse 40. He pours contempt on princes and causes them, that's the princes, to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Yet he sets the poor on high far from affliction. Say that with me. Say far, far from, from affliction. affliction. This is all God does for poor people. Is he sets them on high far from affliction. Now that word affliction here in verse 41 is not the same as verse 49. That word affliction here in verse 41 is the, is the, is the Hebrew word oino, which means affliction, poverty, and misery. Remember when God said, I've seen the affliction of my people? So he says, he sets the poor on high far from poverty. Lord, we accept your desire to set us far from poverty. How many of y'all believe that? Look at somebody and say, I'm far from broke. I'm far from broke. I'm, I'm far, I'm far from broke. I'm, I, I, I don't even know what broke is anymore. I'm far, I'm far, because he sets me far from broke. He puts me far away from broke. I ain't got to check my phone every time. I ain't got to check my register every time. I'm far from broke. Pastor, no, I don't know. I'm, I'm still struggling. Shut well, up. shut up and let him set you. Shut up. Stop setting yourself by broke and shut up and let him set you. You keep setting yourself by broke. He says, I'm going to set you far from broke. Now watch this. Let's, let's finish up. And, and, and makes their families like a flock. In other words, give you a big family. I'm far from broke, boy. Mr. So long as I've been broke, I don't know what broke look like. I don't know how, how you spell broke. I don't even know how to spell broke no more. Verse 42. The righteous see it and rejoice. And all iniquity or all evil got to shut up. So when God brings you your broke self, far from broke, all the folk who talked about you and dulled you out for tithing and for sowing and for fasting and for praying and for seeking God, they're going to just shut their stinking mouths when they see what the Lord has done in your life. And all those who said all those nasty words are going to have to eat their words. They talked about you. They talked about you. They talked about you. Ah, yo, look at you. I saw you. Your car broke down. Look at you. I saw you. you, got, you got, shut up. I'm far from broke now. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Last verse. Last verse, guys. Last verse. Verse 43. Now listen to this. Whoever is wise will observe these things or will consider these things. We'll look at the birds. We'll look at what God does and they will understand the loving kindness or uh, that Hebrew word means goodness. Wait a minute. I, I understand the goodness of God. You don't understand the goodness of God till you've seen him take somebody who was broke. Yeah. Yeah. What did you say? That's what he just said. Yeah. You, don't under, you don't even, under, you think you understand. 
God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. You don't understand goodness of God till you've watched him take you or somebody else who was broke, busted, and disgusted and now have raised them up so high, put them so far from broke See, when you consider this, then you'll understand. Oh, he is a good God, ain't he? Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. He brought me a mighty long way. He turned my life around. I couldn't even see my way, but God made a way out of no way. Matter of fact, not only do I have enough, I have more than enough. I got a barn in the backyard. Ain't no empty barn with no echo. It's a barn filled with plenty. You need something. You need. You need something. You need something. That's you said this morning in prayer. See, they're gonna have to come back and say, "I need. I need something." I'm sorry, I was talking about you. I need something. <laughs> you are right, I was wrong. I need something. See, because when that see that whole thing out there crashes. That's what God said. He'll strip that all down to put it over in your hands. Everybody, everybody do this. Say, say bye bye to broke. Bye bye. Yeah, I ain't tell you look back. Now just the enemy you have seen today, you'll see it no more again forever. Because God is increasing you more and more. Not only for you, you and your children. Come on and give God a praise tonight. Let's get ready to go. Woo! Woo! <laughs> ah, hallelujah. 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 My wife was saying the other day we were we were praying over breakfast and I remember saying, you know, uh, I refuse sickness and disease. I refuse lack. I refuse poverty. I refuse being broken on the day of my life. I refuse. I don't want it. You want that? No, no. One thing we started doing is just we stopped spending everything. Yes. That's, that's one of the natural ways you stop being broke. You just stop spending everything. That don't, that don't take rocket science. That don't even take much anointing. But when you factor in the anointing, <laughs> what God said he'll do, he'll increase you more and more. Then now when you ref refuse to spend everything, now you have seed built up. See, see, you you look at uh, you look at the scriptures. The prophets talk about that. He said, uh, Zechariah said, I think it was. He said, "Is the seed still in the barn?" See, in other words, in other words, when you have a barn, barns hold seed first. But once you take that seed out the barn, out of bank account, out of piggy bank, whatever, and then you sow it in the good. I'll deal with that next week. You sow it, get it in good ground. Not, then all of a sudden, you've made room for harvest. But your barn, God's going to make sure your barn is always full of seed and harvest. That's right. That's right. Plenty of goods. Hallelujah. Let's shout it one more time. I'm far from broke. I'm far from broke. Because <laughs> God's increasing us more and more. Hallelujah. Lift your hands up in the air. Father, I thank you tonight for each and every one of these, your precious people, Lord. We receive this message tonight, sent from heaven, your desire to increase us more and more. God, we now place our faith on your desire to increase us, to set us on high, to set us in a place so far from poverty, from affliction, from misery, 
that, Lord, we live in such an overflow and abundance in our lives that not only do we have enough for us, but we have enough to bless other people. God, we realize in this world there are so many people, Lord, who don't have, and they don't know how to call on you. That's why you put us here. We can supply the needs of all others, God, and point people to Jesus. We can be that, that, that intermediary between those who don't know you and, and, and you, Lord, and say, and Lord, we have the ministry of reconciliation, and we can, we can take somebody and sit them down and, and feed them and clothe them and, and house them. God, you're going to give us enough to house people. Not for one month or not for three months, but God, to, we, we can buy houses debt-free and put people in there so they learn this and how to, how to move up in you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that everything you give us, all that money has a mission behind it. God, thank you that you increase us, Lord. And we, we, we say, Lord, that if riches increase, we will not set our hearts on them. God, we realize that everything we could ever have comes from you. Everything we could ever have, the desire has to come from you, Lord. We don't want anything from the world. The world can have all its mess because it always has mess attached to it. God, we want what comes from your kingdom, those blessings that are stored up for us in heavenly places. So we receive from you tonight. We receive the abundance and the overflow that is, that is your desire and uh, pleasure for us. God, we will praise you. We will glorify you. We will honor you. In fact, God, we will desire your, your word as much as we desire riches. Even more, Lord. We'll put nothing ahead of your word, nothing ahead of your kingdom. We know you give us the power to get wealth. You give us the power to increase. So, Lord, we'll increase, Father, by your grace, by your anointing, by the blessing. Tonight, I speak and declare that blessing over every person in this place. That blessing of increase, that blessing of multiplication. That even, even if we have uh, abundance, God, you'll increase us even more and more from that. You say you'll bless us. You'll bless the house of Israel. You'll bless the house of Aaron. You'll bless those who fear you both small and great. You'll bless children. God, you can bless children even if their parents don't get it. You can bless. You can bless husbands if their wives don't get it. You can bless wives if their husbands don't get it. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter to you, Lord. Whosoever will, call upon you. Your words that the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon you. So, Lord, tonight, thank you that you are rich to us. Now, we honor you, we bless you tonight, and we pray that you'll just continue to keep us in all we do. We pray this blessing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Tonight.